on electric news that really affects all electric vehicles, the Inflation Act was passed. So what does this mean? This means for electric vehicles, there continues to be a $7,500 rebate even when a manufacturer surpasses 200,000 units sold. This definitely, whether you're for EV credits or not, how EV credits were set up before, you know, Ford, Stellantis, Tesla, they all would have suffered because, well, they they're all either already have or on their way to selling over 200,000 units. So really, who would have who would have really benefited? Well, newcomers to our market. So everyone else, Chinese EVs, EVs from around the world. However, this has the opposite effect. So whether you're for EV credits or not, just know that's how EV credits were. Now how the EV credits are gonna work is that it's $7,500 and for a vehicle, well the vehicle base price must be below 55,000 US and if it's a truck or SUV, the price must be below $80,000 US. So there's 72 EV models currently in the US market and well, 52 no longer apply for that credit. There's only 20 models left. And to me, whether you agree with the EV credit or not, this makes sense because let's re recall that EV credits are taxpayers' dollars going towards reducing the price of an electric vehicle. So if you've got an electric vehicle that's let's say 90 or $100,000, does the person buying that vehicle really need a credit? Should they really be taking everyone's tax dollars in order to help them buy a $150,000 EV sports car? Well, my opinion, and you're allowed your own opinion, you can put it right down in the comments. Please share your overall opinion on all of this, but my opinion is no, it shouldn't. So this is to help people who would normally maybe not get an EV, to make it affordable for them. So it's, you could say it's a tax credit or really help buying an EV vehicle for the middle class, not for the ultra wealthy to buy an all electric, who knows, Bugatti. So <laughs> here's the thing of it that kind of makes me chuckle. You've got all these car companies that are upset. The J Japanese car companies are upset. Uh, really just European and Asian vehicle, uh, car manufacturers and truck manufacturers, vehicle manufacturers, they're all really upset. Most of them are saying this is unfair and they want to challenge it. However, I don't see where the logic in challenge, challenging this is. Just think about it. These are American tax dollars being collected to help Americans buy what? Should it be a car not made in America? No, they're taxpayers' dollars from, from Americans. Of course, they should encourage jobs within their borders. So to challenge it at the World Trade Organization, I think is just absolute nonsense. I'm completely not, I completely do not agree with that. They're American taxpayers' dollars. So here's the criteria that's upsetting everyone. It's, it's not the, the max amounts really, it's that the vehicle must be assembled in North America. So Americans have to have created these vehicles. So it's okay if it was assembled in Mexico, just to put things clear. And well, assembled in North America, well, that, that would include Canada as well. Now, the vehicle as well, and also of course the battery, the battery needs to be also manufactured in America. So. Currently 70, 72 EV models, 52 EV models going to different manufacturers, rather upset. What does this encourage? Well, you're taking taxpayers' dollars and, well, you're really encouraging, uh, you know, Audi, which they already do have a factory, but you're encouraging all the other manufacturers that aren't American manufacturers to assemble in the United States. So you're using taxpayers' dollars to, yes, help someone get an electric vehicle that they wouldn't have otherwise possibly gotten. So there's the whole question of, are you really in a state where the electric vehicle is going to have, you know, enough of a benefit to be worthwhile? Well, if your electricity comes from coal, no, not at all, because then it takes about 17 years to offset the negative impact of that battery. 
so the battery is probably only only gonna last somewhere between 15 and 20 years or maybe maybe a little more we'll have to see but there's the whole landfill and pollution issue at the end so it's very debatable but you know, even if you don't think electric vehicles are the bee's knees and the next greatest best thing to save us all, at least know that this tax credit is going to encourage other manufacturers to produce vehicles in North America. So that is absolute great news. Now, if you made it this far in the video, please take the time to just drop a comment, right? Finisher. And if you've got your own comments, your own opinion on this, I'd love to hear it. Share it with the community. That's what we're here for at JCCR. We're here to learn together. And well, sometimes you learn through arguments and discussions. So let's get into discussion in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Now, please do remember, it's greatly appreciated if you hit that subscribe button because it helps feed and dress that poodle. And it also helps dress that French Quebecois. So thank you so very much for watching. Until next time, I do wish you all absolutely, hopefully, more cars very soon and more power. And if it's your thing, I do hope you get to put the pedal to the metal this week. Again, thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care.